So what is the best lens for product photography? And I would say maybe it's cousin still life photography. They're kind of the same thing. First, we've got to uh, think about what, what is the goal for our product photography? Okay, what is the goal for a product shot? Uh, I think it is to uh, present an item uh, that you've got for sale uh, in such a way as to make it look attractive or useful or at the very least worth the money that you're trying to extract from uh, the buyer, the you know the customer. I think there's also, you've got a little responsibility to be uh, somewhat ethical about it too. You don't want to misrepresent the product. We definitely want uh, to uh, give the buyer uh, an accurate representation of what the item looks like. Okay, so then we're back to the question, uh, what lens do we use? What's the best lens uh, to, to do all that? Now, the best lens is going to be uh, dependent on the camera that you're using, the camera format. Traditionally with 35 millimeter film cameras like this, uh, photographers like me got used to the idea of uh, you know the 50 millimeter lens as being the standard uh, you know focal length. Now, why is that? Well, the theory goes uh, that the 50 millimeter lens gets us closest to what the human eyes see when they're looking out at a scene. Now, uh, that's on a 35 millimeter film camera, and our DSLRs and our mirrorless cameras, you know, full framed. Uh, the plane of the of the sensor that you're using is pretty close to that of the size of the 35 millimeter film plane. Now, of course, we've got crop sensors and things like that, but basically you're in the same general ballpark. A 50 millimeter on a full frame camera is one thing and a 50 millimeter on a crop sensor uh, is just the same picture, but it's cropped a little. So we've come to regard the 50 millimeter as kind of the normal uh, lens for a camera of that format. Now, if you're talking about something like a medium format camera, I'm looking here for, let's say, the old Hasselblad, which is a you know a film camera. A 50 millimeter lens on a Hasselblad 6x6 camera is uh, equates to like a 28 millimeter on one of the old uh, 35 millimeter cameras or your DSLR or mirrorless camera, you're, you know, unless you're using a medium format. So why do we use a 50 millimeter or a standard or normal lens? Well, if you know anything about cameras and lenses, you're probably, you probably learned at some point that the wider angle lenses uh, tend to distort the object shown in your image. This is especially true if you're, uh, you're getting your lens closer up to the object because things uh, just a little bit closer to that lens are gonna look a lot bigger than things just a little bit farther away. So you might even really distort the look of a small object if you've got the, a wide angle lens close up to it. Now, the farther back you go with that wide angle lens, the less distorted that object will be, but of course you're a lot farther away from it. Now, other things in the scene might get a little distorted. Okay, so you're doing product photography and you don't want that distortion. And uh, so you're opting for maybe a normal focal length lens like a 50 millimeter, but uh, even a 50 millimeter can somewhat distort uh, an object if, you know, just depending on the situation, depending on how close you are. So some people might want to opt for something a little longer uh, as far as the lens goes. There's something in the telephoto range. And so what I want to do is I want to try out a few different focal lengths and compare them and see what we get uh, with say a 50 and 70 millimeters, then uh, 85 and so on. So what I'm gonna do while we're doing this is, is take photos and compare lenses, but try to frame up the object the same way in each of the shots. All right, here we go. This is gonna be a very unscientific comparison and demonstration of uh, you know what 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 you're going to get by using different focal length lenses for product shots and still lifes and things like that. Uh, we're going to start with the 85 millimeter. Now I think this is a really good choice. This is probably my favorite one right now for something like this. And just to let you know, uh, this object that we're looking at here is a vase about uh, a foot tall and five inches wide at its widest point here. So uh, we are uh, shooting at f2.8 for this first shot um, and we're about 36 inches from the front of the object here facing the camera to the front of the lens so it's about 36 inches uh, to get this image that we have here and you can see there's a nice depth of field this background is maybe about uh, 
two and a half, three feet away from the backside of the object. All right, so same thing, but this time we are at F8, okay, which is something that you might want to do if, you know, especially if the product that you're showcasing, uh, you know, has a lot of detail and you want to make sure that you capture uh, a lot of things in focus on the object uh, in one shot. But, you know, of course, and what you're giving up is a little bit of that uh, background blur. In this case, not such a big deal, but if you compare the two, then yeah, this is a little bit you know, softer, a little bit nicer. Uh, the object kind of pops out of the background a little bit more. Anyway, that's an 85 millimeter lens on a Sony a7 III. All right, here we're moving up to a 135, 135 millimeter lens. Now this is not a lens specifically designed for anything of the modern era, okay? This is a 135 designed for a Minolta uh, camera back in the film days, but I have an adapter that uh, allows me to use it on my Sony mirrorless. Now again, here we start off uh, at f2.8. We are now 62 inches away from the object, as opposed to with the 85, we were 36 inches, uh, for basically the same kind of framing. I like how this looks too. Uh, again, that's f2.8. And here's the same lens at this time at f8. Let's move on to what we were talking about before as being the normal lens. This is a 50 millimeter lens. Again, uh, this lens was uh, designed for film cameras uh, going back to the 1970s and 80s, but I've got an adapter for it that fits on my uh, Sony camera, and, uh, and this is what we get here. We are at f2.8. And on this particular lens, we could uh, open it up even wider, but I wanted, uh, you know, to have a sort of consistent as possible uh, comparison. Same thing, but this time we're at f8. For these two shots, we are 20 inches from the object to maintain that same kind of framing. In other words, space up here, space down here, and the object about the same size as it is in the other frames. But of course, we've got to get closer and I don't know if you notice it, I notice uh, just a little bit of distortion. The object doesn't quite appear as it does uh, to uh, my eye when I'm looking at the object in person. Um, I get more of that with uh, the uh, more telephoto lens. And knowing that, let's just go to the other extreme and there is uh, 24 millimeters on my wide to slightly telephoto zoom on the Sony. Now this is with a modern lens. We've got to get to about 10 inches from the object to have that same kind of spacing. But you see, once we frame it up that way, so that it kind of matches where the uh, where it appears in the other frames, once we match it up that way, we've got to get so close to the object that now you're really seeing that distortion because uh, you know the front part of the object is looking a lot larger uh, in proportion to um, the other areas of the object. It just looks really weird this way at 24 millimeters. And we are at uh, f8 here. And that's why back here you can really see the detail in the, in the curtain uh, background that I hung up. And on that same lens, like I said, that is a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. And we're at 24 millimeters here. Uh, now, the other end of the lens, uh, that is 70 millimeters. So we've zoomed out to 70 in the same lens and we get something that's a little uh, a little more true to life. This is weird, 24 millimeters. This is better at 70 millimeters. And we are still, uh, I just left the aperture where it was and you can see what the detail looks like back here in the background. One thing that I like about uh, using a lens that's fast is that you've, you can uh, have a certain amount of control over your depth of field like we did over here with the 85 we have this nice soft look to the background uh, i think that with a lot of product photography uh, i'm noticing a lot of uh, people are you know trying to uh, evoke a little bit of um, a mood or atmosphere and so uh, that's what i did here i plopped a couple of things in the foreground and in the background 
around the object, uh, which would be my, you know, my product that I'm trying to uh, uh, depict here. And see, now I'm opening it up all the way to f1.8, okay, on that 85 millimeter lens. And I have this really nice look. Now, if you want like this super sharp detail on all areas of a three dimensional object, 1.8 at whatever this is, something like uh, uh, 35, 36 inches away, uh, is not going to give you a lot of detail. You're going to start, if you focus in right here, you're going to start lo losing detail right as you move away a little bit. Uh, but we've got some, some stuff in focus just a little bit over here, but it just drops off very quickly. These objects right here are pretty close to my main object here, but they are just way blurry, which is kind of cool because this is the thing I want to feature. More important than the detail in something like this would be just the effect that you're trying uh, to uh, convey. Uh, you know, uh, this is, it gives the object a little bit of a story and might make it a little easier to sell uh, the feel. Lots of times they say uh, sell the sizzle, not the steak. Well, you're you're selling, um, I don't know, I guess kind of the hint of a lifestyle or a decorative option, uh, and that's what we have here. All right, so you probably want to experiment with different focal lengths uh, for your next product shot or still life. Now, it's all going to depend on the size of the object and how much room that you've got to work with between uh, the lens and the uh, item that you're photographing uh, and you know the uh, type of situation that you're in but uh, you also want to experiment a little bit with the lighting we didn't really go over that but I've got a lot of videos you can look down in the links below I'll link to some of them uh, you want to mess around with the lighting a little bit and try to cast shadows in different ways and use some fill lighting and different things like that maybe throw some uh, throw a little cookie back there to see if you can get sort of different effects with shadows. Um, we want to do this and probably experiment a little bit with depth of field. So maybe using some wider apertures in some of your shots uh, so that you can kind of blur out the background or blur out certain aspects of the little scene that you're shooting. Now, uh, lots of times uh, with product photography, you just want a plain white background. You want everything kind of sterile looking, uh, depending on the item that you're trying to sell. But other times you want to evoke sort of a mood uh, or an atmosphere in the picture. Maybe you want to tell a little bit of a story. In the end, uh, adding a little atmosphere might be a good way to help sell some of your items. All right, guys, that's about it for today. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. You know what to do. Click the like button if you liked the video. Uh, click subscribe. Definitely leave me a comment. All right, see you next time.